Okay. Tishon Roker. I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, I practiced yeah. beforehand. Thank <laughs> you so much for coming on Crazy Calm TV. Thank you for having me, Matt. And you know, you told me you're you're in Boston. How's your outlook on on life right now? You know, what's going on in your mind? Yeah, uh, I think life. I think for everyone probably, but uh, life is definitely a bit of a grind. But just getting through it, meditating a lot, trying to exercise, um, just kind of going through and pushing through. What do you do for exercise? Yeah, I uh, I kind of try to switch it up. I typically like to do like like weightlifting uh at the gym but now there's like no gym and i don't have weights so uh i go on runs and then there's actually a park uh near me that i run to and then i like, try to do some pull-ups and stuff at the park uh without people seeing <laughs> gotcha um yeah it's you have to adjust right and and i also think well for most of us but especially with with your startup with name base you know you're in front of a computer a lot of times so it's like the you know, neck issues, back and like stretching is and meditating, all that stuff is, is really important. Um, so this is going to be a different type of interview for you. You know, Blake and Andreas were nice enough to introduce us. I think name base and in what you're doing for handshake, which is the, the protocol that we're going to talk about today can be interesting to, to non techie people. Right. And, and so. I'm going to challenge you to, in, in layman's terms or laywoman's terms, uh, to to explain it. So I want to start off with with some problems that you've seen that made you want to start Namebase in the first place. Yeah, totally. Um, and you know, maybe what might be helpful is I can kind of just give like a quick high level description of what we do, and then I can frame some of the problems in the context of that. Okay. Uh, just because it might kind of give a better framing. So yeah. name base at a high level, we basically just uh, make this new protocol called Handshake easier to use. Uh, so really, the focus should be around Handshake when we discuss it, because name base, once you understand it, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like super easy to understand. Right. It's, it's well, it's like a made easy. episode because name base makes hand Handshake easier to use. And we're trying to make name base easier to understand, right? So we got the yeah. three level here, but that, that's fine. And you say handshake is a protocol. I think sometimes people can get lost with with the protocol. But uh, let me let me try here. Handshake mm -hmm. is so everyone knows dot com dot org. Uh, you know universities or dot edu. These are called top level domains. But there mm -hmm. are some restrictions that we'll talk about with these top level dot you know domains and the people that own dot com dot co. .edu, they make a ton of money. Obviously, everyone knows that. And there are some restrictions on freedom. Handshake saying there's other dots. You know, there could be dot crazy calm, um, dot Tishon. Uh, there's many others that are not taken by, you know, by the traditional dot com dot org registers. Uh, and let's make those available to anyone and limit or get rid of the censorship that exists D is that a decent uh, yeah definition? yeah that's definitely at a high level uh that's basically kind of the value prop that handshake is coming in and saying so you know these normal dot coms and dot orgs and etc uh they're controlled by this uh entity called ICANN. and if you want to register a new tld top level domain uh like you just mentioned um, there's an entire process involved, like a normal person wouldn't be able to get involved. You have to be a big company and the big company, you need to pay a $200,000 application fee just to apply to try to register one of these names. And then that's, you know, the cost of actually getting the name on top of that is gargantuan. Uh, and what handshake is doing is it's actually letting anyone go and register their own TLD, uh, in this new system, uh, that we can talk about, but it lets anyone own that new TLD, which is really radical because normally for a domain name, let's say you own, you know, Google.com, you're Google and you register.com, you don't actually own it. You actually just uh, can rent, rent it. You have to pay every year to rent it and it can, it can be taken away from you. And, and actually there is a uh, recent example, just a few years ago of uh, an engineer who actually registered Google.com because Google forgot to renew their domain. Uh, so it's like this whole fiasco is like really funny actually, but it, it just shows that even these massive companies, they don't actually own their domains because they're just renting they're, they're renting the domains from the top level domain provider. So like Verisign owns .com. So then when you go and register a .com name, you have to go and, and register a name with Verisign. 
So that's the situation. And Handshake lets anyone own truly own their own name. And then now you can also register any name, right? So you can go and get .crazycom when normally you, you could only ever you know buy crazycom.com or crazycom.io. So it's opening up the namespace and it's allowing true ownership of this uh, really important asset on the internet because the domain name system, which is what we're talking about, is something that literally every internet user in the world uses, right? Every time you type in google.com or youtube.com, you're using the domain name system. So it's incredibly important. Okay, and so great job there, listeners. So TLD, top level domain, that's the dot com, right? Yeah. And so- Everything that comes after the dot. Yeah, anything after the dot, yeah. Uh, it could be dot com, dot MX for, for Mexico. Uh, you know, there's, there's many of these top level domains. So imagine owning, let's just say, you know, dot crazy column, which, I, which funny enough, I, I tried to bid on and I unfortunately lost it. That's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But I could say, hey, anyone, you, you want to have uh, Taishan or Jane or Rick dot crazy column, uh, I could actually sell that and be an owner of that uh, and allow anyone to, to put anything up there and it could not be, you know, taken down. Uh, now, so we understand now that these top level domains dot com dot orgs and Handshake is making new ones available. Um, let's talk about some of the, you mentioned the problems on the business side. It's harder to own these dot coms that works, but most people, they don't really want to own a top level domain, right? I would say most people that's may not be of interest to them. It could be, but they're just, I just want to use the internet. You know, I go to amazon.com. It works. Um, but give me some problems with the, with the current system outside of the, the business part of buying and, and owning them. Yeah, totally. So there are, um, systemic level problems that maybe more engineers would care about that are probably like the the strongest problems that we can talk about later the the other problems are you touched on this already uh is is to do with censorship and uh seizure on the internet uh today uh and it's not not just what's happening today but actually the trend of what's happening on the internet is that uh, basically the the internet is is getting worse over time it's becoming less free it's becoming less open it's becoming more expensive um and the story there is I can share a little bit about kind of what got me originally excited about Handshake. You know, me and my co-founder, uh, we were working together and we found out about Handshake and we got excited about it. Uh, but in terms of, you know, my personal relationship with Handshake, um, it was really due to uh, when I was in school, I was able to travel to Turkey. And uh, it was really fascinating because, you know, I grew up in the U.S., so we don't really have too many issues with censorship here uh, just because of the freedom of speech, right? It's like the, the amendment is so such a strong primitive here. Uh, but I got to travel to Turkey and I was just like browsing the internet. Uh, and it was amazing. I think I was visiting a website like Wikipedia or YouTube or something like that, like a normal uh, information site and it was blocked. Uh, I couldn't access it. And that was really shocking to me because I had grown up, you know, using these resources. I taught myself how to program using these resources. So the fact that it was just completely blocked was very jarring. Uh, and I'd like to say I, I like, you know, went and, and did something about it then, but uh, honestly, I, I didn't, right? It was, uh, I just saw the problem. I was like, wow, this is pretty messed up. Uh, but I didn't think that there was anything that I could do about it. So I just continued my travels, went back to America and then kind of didn't think about it. Uh, but then when Handshake came along, I basically saw this opportunity for actually Handshake to create this new internet that is free, uh, that can't be blocked. Uh, and that was very exciting for me. And there's a number of reasons why I was able to you know, build a conviction. My co-founder and I, we were able to build a conviction on Handshake, but that's really one of the core reasons, you know, you see the censorship happening around the world. Maybe it's not as prevalent in America yet, but you're starting to see, uh, I mean, even, even this coronavirus, right, has highlighted some oh, of wow. the questions that is coming out, right? Like uh, YouTube, uh, I think I saw a clip where the YouTube CEO was talking about, you know, they would take down any video that contradicted what the WHO uh, said. Uh, Let's talk about that, right? So yeah. that, that's a perfect example. And listen, the World Health Organization, uh, you know, I don't want to demonize them. They've obviously made some uh, big errors. They've also been right about certain things, right? But it's really YouTube determining, um, and, and Google obviously has, you know, we're using Google Meet to record this, uh, funny enough, but the they have a huge influence and they're they're very intertwined with with government right and you know the world health organization is is affiliated with the united nations it's a governmental organization they're saying anything that contradicts the world health organization um which they've been wrong about they're not an oracle meaning they're not always right uh will be taken down right and so i think that has opened people's eyes in the united states so um let, let's just let's just say you and i have a a website where we're starting to publish our own thoughts on the coronavirus, maybe how the the effect on the economy will 
we'll, we somehow find a way to quantify the amount of damage done by keeping us in, you know, like in Los Angeles, it's still the end of July, is worse than the additional number of deaths that would happen by ending the lockdown. This is just a hypothetical example, right? But, you know, maybe on, on a, a .com, the registrar, uh, they could say, someone could tell uh, ICANN, say, hey, the, uh, you know, Matt and Tishon's website, it's got to be taken down. Um, now, now let me ask you, so going back to this Turkey situation, you're in Turkey with Handshake, how would that not be blocked if, if I have a, a dot, um, and I think it's worth uh, under, explaining to people that, you know, Handshake won't have .com.org. They're kind of trying to do all the ones that aren't. So there's not a conflict when you, on your web browser. Um, but, you know, how would Handshake allow for people to not to be censored and be able to see this information in Turkey and Iran and, and so forth? Yeah, totally. Uh, and you, you touched on a great point there, which is to use Handshake's internet, pretty much all you do is you just change a setting on your computer to point your uh, DNS, that stands for domain name system. Uh, you just I got I got to stop you there because it's just like the, D, the DNS is how you uh, resolve uh, the website addresses, right? Just yeah, the, the, the domain name system is just everything that we talked about just now, like google.com, yeah. top level domains, you know, the Google part registering that, like that entire system is the domain name system. So whenever we talk about, you know, anything with a dot in it, we're just talking about uh, something, you know, a domain or a domain name system. Right. But I would think that you'd be able to connect to the internet and then with your browser, you can enable this, this other protocol, but hopefully just like all types of technology, uh, blockchain based technologies, it will kind of be in the background, just like when someone purchases things on amazon.com, they don't understand the packets of data being sent or mm -hmm. the HTTPS, but in the background, uh, I'm thinking brave browser will be the leader here, uh, uh, which is a great browser that I use, um, and started by the guys that started Firefox, right? It's, it's, um, they have, they have quite the credentials behind them, but in the background, you'll be able to pull up these new types of domains seamlessly without being tech savvy and mm -hmm. the access will not be able to be blocked by, by, uh, countries uh, government. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, you don't even need to use a new browser. You can use uh, Chrome too. I'm using uh, handshake on Chrome right now. So you just change the setting and then you're done. And then everything happens in the background. So I could show if you want, I could show you a screen share actually. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Um, yeah, here, let me do present now, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it says I'm presenting my screen. Do you see yourself here? See myself, yep. All right, so let me go to welcome.mb. Oh, actually, oh, wait, I need to, sorry, I just need to, let me turn it on. <laughs> yeah, uh, here this is obviously, um, yeah. Yeah, so this is actually how you would use it. So you, right. you, you use NextDNS, which is a uh, DNS provider uh, that it was actually launched by the, uh, I think it was like some execs at Netflix, and they also, were uh, the founders of Daily Motion, if I recall correctly. So it's actually a really legit team. And they created a privacy focused DNS resolver, which I can explain what that means uh, in a second. But basically, it's just a, a super easy way and it's a fast and secure way to go and use the internet. And not only that, but they also went and supported uh, Handshake natively in their resolver. So now if I go back here, whoops. And it looks like it can help block ads and, and just malware and things that people don't, don't want anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So now you can see I'm on welcome.nb and this is a, a homepage that we created uh, just to kind of show people that they can get started on Handshake, uh, just proving that it works. Um, so you see the URL here is welcome.nb. And I think another one is uh, this guy, Gonchalo. He is uh, the co-founder of Consensus uh, like Security or something like that. And he created his personal website on uh, handshake. And so you kind of see this as a kind dot thief dot thief is not a normal, uh, TLD, right? It's not like a dot com or dot dot net, but he was able to register that on handshake. And then he was able to create that entire uh, domain, which is right here. So the dot thief part, this is the top level domain. This is technically what's called a second level domain an SLD. Uh, and the entire thing here is what you would normally refer to as a domain. And this domain right. only exists on handshake. But then if I go to youtube.com, my normal YouTube will work. If I go to google.com, my normal google.work, uh, google.com will work. So that's how uh, this works is that you just point your, uh, you, you just set up Handshake on your computer, uh, which is very easy. You can just use NextDNS. And there's there's other ways too. Um, 
but this is a really easy way and then you're and then you're good to go okay and and back in that le brut page that you showed me i i still like you know it will i'm sure it'll become even easier that you don't even need an account with next dns um that over time it, it will become more seamless but so that guy owns uh gonzalo he owns dot thief meaning mm -hmm. that if, hey i'd like to own matt dot thief he could sell it to me and i could pay him for this um, yeah yeah and and for listeners that aren't familiar with a lot of blockchain and cryptocurrency stuff it's you know the way things are you know fundraising um participation a lot of it's really giving access to normal everyday people things that only big companies and people with a lot of money had access to before i think that's one of the theses of of cryptocurrency giving you know giving access and accessibility to everyone of 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 digital products and, and digital freedom yeah like in in the normal system without handshake uh gonzalo being able to register a thief would cost him a few hundred thousand dollars uh <laughs> yeah so that's just completely out of the question whereas i'm just checking right now if i go to namebase.io slash domain slash thief uh he was able to register it for one hns uh so 10 cents actually uh which was, was quite amazing that's what i was telling you about earlier matt where uh some of the names go for an amazing amount like crypto on handshake went for 200 000 hns the number eight went for 200 000. 000 hns is is like what twenty thousand bucks thirty 000? yeah twenty thousand and at the time actually handshake was uh priced higher so at the time it was like closer to a hundred thousand dollars actually that was spent on the name uh and then eight two uh i think the price was a little higher then so it's probably around like thirty forty thousand dollars uh but yeah even even at the uh current say it's twenty thousand dollars which is an amazing amount uh to be spending right the system there's a lot of money flowing through the system now but a normal person can go and register amazing names for a very small amount too um maybe we can talk about kind of how the registrations uh actually goes and works on handshake a little bit later yeah let's do that a little bit later but i just want to so go back and we talked about being in iran and turkey we talked about now with the world health organization and and youtube um you know this this podcast i put on youtube and i also put on library type TV, which is a decentralized version of, of, of YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, less censorship. I, I think people have seen this with Facebook pages, um, Instagram pages, uh, you know, YouTube channels is that you can be, you know, demonetized or your, or Twitter, your account can be banned. So the, the trend is going into more and more censorship and, and, and blocking from government authority. So this is a, a tool to own your content because if you're going to just think of it in this way it's like you start a business um or, or a, a website or a content or any type of content website maybe you do fantasy you know fantasy fiction right fan fiction or whatever it is uh just having it taken away from you and we've seen this with many content creators um it, it's not owning it, it it's a very powerless feeling there's people that have had their revenue streams just taken away from under them so this is a way to kind of take back that uh, take back that ownership. Yeah, totally. And you know the thing that's important here is ownership at multiple levels of the stack, right? So you can think of like one way is like, oh, if you're publishing your blog on Medium, Medium can then do whatever they want with your blog post versus if you're blog publishing your blog on your own blog website. Uh, and then it's like, okay, once you're publishing your blog on your own blog website, uh, you know, do you actually own that domain? And there's, there are numerous examples of, you know, bloggers who are like, oh, like my domain got taken away from me for some reason. And then I had a fight to get it back and it was like really disruptive. Uh, and, and it's not even for, uh, explicit censorship. Sometimes, sometimes it's just like the system, uh, just has like a glitch based on how it's set up and they just have their name taken away from them. And it's like, Hey, I've been, I've been blogging here for like 13 years. And then now my domain is like shut down. My, my visitors can't go and use my blog um so if you don't control uh your domain as well that's that is the entry point to your website so it's really disruptive if you don't actually own it um it, it's just not uh not good for the system now along those lines so if i own dot thief uh just for example or and i sell you a domain do i have the power to take your let's say um name base dot thief down mm -hmm. uh yeah great question so for that one it actually really depends on how you set that up. So as the TLD owner, you can set up whatever policies you want uh, for that second level domain. Uh, you could even, uh, theoretically, you could create a, another blockchain-based solution to actually go and register the second level domains. 
Uh, so you can do something like that as well and have like a bridge there. Uh, or you can- Let, let me, uh, sorry, I just, I just got to define that. Uh, sorry to interrupt there, but so let's say I own that thief, right? And you can, um, or that, whatever, yeah, that thief is our example here. I could, cause I'm competing, it's a marketplace, right? Um, you know, you own dot com, I own dot thief. And I'll say, hey, well, uh, you know, uh, Tishan's charging $2 per year. I'm charging $1.50 per year, you know, and we have a system where, uh, you know, everyone that owns dot thief domains, if for your, for you to lose your, your, um, you know, we'll say, uh, you know, soccer dot thief, let's say you want to make a website about soccer. Uh, there's got to be a voting mechanism that's that's built in. So that's the only way you can do it. It, it. I it will build into the protocol that I, the owner of that thief, cannot arbitrarily take it away from you, like in, in the current mm -hmm. system, right? So there's because a lot of people I think get confused, like, okay, we just moved to to handshake and everything's good. No, there's there's gonna be different ways of looking at it. There might be some people that don't really care about censorship, and all they care about is what is the, the cheapest amount of money I can pay to have a, mm -hmm. a domain name, right? And especially I think in in poorer countries. Um, you know, I think, you know, Venezuela, South Sudan come to, to mind, but there's many, uh, that, that, that don't have as many resources. Maybe the most important thing is just paying one cent for their domain because, because the difference between one cent and, you know, $15 per year is, is significant. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. So you're, you're exactly right there. The cool thing about handshake is that every TLD can basically have its own setup in terms of how you can register the second level domain. So you can have a normal, uh, a TLD that basically functions like a normal.com uh, where, you know, you buy it on like a registrar and it costs $10 and there's like a renewal fee. So you can set up a system like that and it's like very normal, or you can set up a completely alternative blockchain based system uh, at a different TLD. And then now it's like, oh, when you're registering that one is like on the blockchain and there's a whole different setup. Uh, you can even have, you know, another one that is just completely giving out the names for free, or maybe you have to, uh, I don't know, tweet at them on Twitter or something to get the name. Uh, and then that's how it actually gets distribution. So you have all these uh, different systems and each TLD owner has full control over how they set up that system. Uh, and then the cool thing with Handshake is that anyone can become a TLD owner. So not only can you be a, a user of the system, right? We're all users of the domain name system today, but now every user can become their own owner and every owner can create their own uh, system and, and make it valuable or make it useful. So that's one of the really neat things about it. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's a, that's a great point. Just kind of the internet. I mean, obviously the internet has lowered censorship because it's given so much freedom of speech, but now it, you're starting to see it be taken away. And, and I mean, what I mean to say is, uh, you know, the internet changed, I mean, compared to just having, you know, magazines and newspapers, I mean, the internet has been huge for that, but this is kind of, kind of redoing it and, and adding a, a different stretch to it in a really, uh, really important time. Um, gosh, I lost my train of thought, but oh yeah. So now that people are, are watching this, you still may have questions about it. I realize this is a, a completely new concept. That's what we're, you know, we try to do on this show and expose you to. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. I'll try to answer them the best I can, but I'll, I'll bug Tishan. Um, if there's something that I don't know the answer to, or go to the, the you know, the handshake community and, and ask as well, because I realize you still may have questions. That's great. I'll answer them here on, on the YouTube chat. Uh, and to finish off, probably one of the questions is like, okay, this is really interesting. I'd like to buy a dot something. Um, you know, can you walk us through that? You can even share the screen and, and show us how it works. Yeah, totally. Um, and, and I think I just described it because there's not much to share. All you really need to do is just, uh, you go to namebase.io uh, and you can sign up. So that's really what our product does is there's, uh, you know, if you think about like a normal domain, right? You're like, oh, there's a DNS system, there's a protocol. And like, you know, you don't need to know how that all works. All you just do is you go to GoDaddy and you right. type in your name and then you go and buy it. Uh, same thing on Handshake is you go to namebase. Uh, you can type in your name and you can go and uh, bid on it. So the, there's actually an auction system, which is what you were talking about earlier, how you, you, know, you didn't win uh, that crazy calm. So you can bid on the name and then if you win, you, if you have the highest bid, you actually just pay the second highest price, uh, the second highest bid price. Uh, and then just for a little bit more context, this might be getting too into the weeds, but the money doesn't actually go to name base when you do it. Uh, the protocol has a system for basically taking those funds that you bid with and just destroying them uh, on chain. So it's like kind of like a deflationary 
uh, asset in that respect. Um, so name-based basically just makes it easy for you to access uh, Handshake and interact with the protocol. And so you just go on to Namebase, you buy the HNS, which is what you use uh, to bid. So let me take a step back there. So uh, you cannot, right now, you cannot buy these uh, these top level domains, the .com-ish, uh, you know, these extensions with, you have to buy them with a, a special cryptocurrency that isn't Bitcoin. It's called HNS, right? Which you can, uh, you know, you have to buy, you just have to buy Bitcoin and then buy this cryptocurrency. And that's the mm -hmm. currency that's, that's used to manage this. Some people, uh, again, this is not investment advice, have invested in it because they think that the, the value of this currency is going to go up as more and more people start embracing and using this, this handshake system. But that's the currency I use to, to purchase um, these, these top level domains. I just wanted to, to clarify that. Yeah, that's exactly correct. And there and there are some technical re they're like, oh, why can't you use dollars for it? Like there are some technical reasons for why you needed your own uh, cryptocurrency for it. But then what what Namebase does is we effectively make it easy for you to go and buy the HNS. So right now you can buy HNS with Bitcoin. If you're in the US, we're actually launching. It's it's currently rolling out. You can buy HNS with your dollars. Uh, so Matt, for any of your subscribers, if they want to get in on the, on that beta early, let me know and I can give them access. So they can actually go and just use their dollars instead of Bitcoin. Um, and then, you know, eventually, again, again, Namebase is just trying to make Handshake easy to use. So eventually we'll track that all the way. And it's like, okay, you don't even need to worry about the HNS. You just like put in your uh, credit card and then we will bid on the name for you and you don't have to worry about those details. Uh, we're working to that point, but right now some of those steps are a little bit more discreet. So you need to get the HNS first and then you need to bid on the names. Yeah, and I think like Namebase has already done such a good job just even for the, the auction setup. But remember, all new technologies in the beginning, they're they're not going to be as easy to use. There's going to be be bugs. But that's part of the exciting part of, of new technologies, whether that's self-driving cars or or the handshake system. And so I, I like to, to explain it to, to friends that, you know, hey, think of a way better version of GoDaddy to access this network. That's that's Namebase. Um, and yeah, well, Taishan, um, I, I really appreciate you coming on. I, I think we gave a pretty nice overview. Again, we'll link to add a ton of information in the show notes here. Um, for for anyone listening to this this episode, please ask your questions, and I'll try to respond to them. And more than anything, I I really appreciate your time this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me, Matt. And and I'll just say one closing note, which is for anyone who is curious, uh, there's a lot of information to kind of take in. So we have a learning center, but more importantly, in that learning center, you'll see there's a link to our community. Uh, our Discord community is very, very helpful. It's just a bunch of people who are excited about Handshake. And so for anyone who's actually curious, uh, that's, that's a great resource for them because you know some of the auction mechanics and some of all the technical specifics, that can be confusing. And so the community will definitely help and explain things because uh, that's really the, why it exists. Uh, so I would just recommend that as a resource as well. Yeah, I mean, I would love, even if one person, but hopefully more, watches this episode that's that's non-technical, but they they resonate with the, the censorship resistance and the, the freedom and just kind of democratizing access to these these domain name extensions, the, the dot whatever, the dot mat, whatever it is, and say, hey, I want to get involved. I think that would be awesome because I think right now it's mostly technical people that are playing with it, which is fine. And you need that to build out the ecosystem. But but for this to work, you're going to need non-technical people to, to embrace this eventually. Yeah, totally. And there are a lot of the core community members are actually non-technical, but it, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, Technical too. Yeah, there's a lot of just people who are, who, are, who resonate with the message, as you said. Already. Okay, um, great. So let's get yeah. more. Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, Tejan, we'll check out namebase.io. And uh, thank you so much for coming on Crazy Calm TV. Yeah, thanks for having me.